Hey, cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna do a freestyle video. I've got a couple of field experiments to do for the very first time. I've got a new build of MCOM Tools R3, build number five, which is the first release to support plug and play support for cat control and GPS for a number of radios. And one of those radios is the IC705. Now, I've never used the IC705 outside of the plug and play development. I've only put it on receive one time. So I've never transmitted with that radio. So that will be a first on this channel. Also, uh, while that radio will never be a field radio for me, I did bring it today in the field. So I'll show you kind of the initial uh, way that I'm kind of configuring that. Again, very late to the party on the 705. And no, it's not replacing my 818. The 705 was something that was donated and something that I'm doing because I know the community wants that sport for MCOM tools. So we're gonna test out a new build, test out the 705. I'm gonna do a quick field expedient deployment. And on that note here, really simple. We're not even going to use the mass. I've got uh, Tim N9 SABs and Fed Half Wave. This will take me 10, uh, 15, 20, and 40 meters. And we're just gonna deploy it super low to the ground, uh, basically as a flat topper for NVIS. So stick around. All right, folks, so that took no time at all. I actually have about half of the N Fed Half Wave going down in this direction and it's about six feet high not perfect a little bit of a bend here but uh, you can actually see the uh, the matching unit is just up in this tree again about six feet high and then i've got the uh, coax acting as the counterpoise going straight into the ic705 lunchbox here and then we've got the fzm1 booted for the first time all right folks i've got the fzm1 booted for the first time using the new build up here in the right hand corner, I actually have Conky and I have configured it to basically show the state of all of the plug and play equipment with a few other things. Right now you can see that it says radio, uh, it's not selected. And then also that the cat control is not available and the GPS is not connected. I'll show you a little tool that I've written called ET-radio. Uh, it'll be available for the command line geeks out there. The plan in a few weeks is to have a nice graphical user interface. So I'm gonna run ET radio, and it's going to basically allow me to show the active radio. There isn't one. I can show uh, the list of radios supported. We'll do that. And then we can also set the radio we want. So I'll do a list. And you can see here that we have a handful of radios supported. Uh, I'm not going to answer any questions on the comments on what or is not supported. I'm doing all of that work on the Buy Me A Coffee side. And uh, we're going to go ahead now and do ET Radio, Set, and I'm going to put ICOM-IC705. And when I do that, uh, it does not exist. Oh, I put 750, guys. Okay, so when I do that, Conky in the upper right-hand corner should show uh, a radio as being selected in about 10 seconds. Uh, that's about the interval it takes for it to refresh. And you can see there on the screen, it says IC705. If there's time at the end of this video, I'll show you how I'm kind of dressing the initial 705 for field work. Again, I don't plan to use it in the field. I plan to kit it out uh, mostly for the Jeep and the RV. So we'll take our USB cable and it should detect the 705, both the cat control and the GPS. And it'll actually go through a number of different phases. I'm actually really interested to see the GPS support. And as you can see, it's already reading the VFO. I'm on uh, figure 7.078. Let me close the, the nerd window here. That's the terminal, the nerd window. And then you can see already it has my GPS. So right off the bat, very first install of MCOM tools is working. Uh, the other cool thing too that I implemented for this uh, portion of the release is automatic time sync. This thing has never been connected to the internet. I put it on the USB thumb drive, did the install, so it should also time sync, so no issues with JS8. So the plug and play is absolutely working for CAT and uh, GPS. Uh, next week, the plan is to focus on the plug and play for the audio, so that'll all work. So for right now, we're gonna have to do that manually. Uh, but again, this is not gonna be the future state of the project. In fact, this is a good exercise for me to see what actually needs to be done based on the current build for a new install. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, check the sound card again. I've never used this radio on the sound side and there's a utility called Alsa Mixer. And I don't know what the audio levels need to be, but I'm gonna use what I typically use for the Digirig Mobile. So I'm gonna press, I think it's F5, F6. It looks like the USB audio codec is the right one for this guy here. Oh no, this is gonna be terrible. 
I was expecting to see a speaker and um, left, right. Um, hmm. Okay, we're gonna leave everything like this. We're just gonna hope that audio works. Uh, this is not exactly what I was expecting to see. Uh, again, I haven't got to the audio development. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is open up JSA Call. Now, I have already pre-configured in the previous release JSA Call to use the uh, behind the scenes rig control daemon. It comes from the Hamlib library. So you can actually see it's already on frequency at 7.078. Again, if I were to move now the, the VFO, we should be down at 7.075. In fact, if uh, we move this guy out of the way, you can even see that Conky with my support shows you 7075 as well. All right, so what we're gonna have to do now is manually configure a few things. And guys, the other thing I plan to do in a future release of, of MCOM tools is run JS8 call in what we call a headless mode and put a new interface that doesn't require the keyboard or the mouse. Uh, that's gonna be coming probably in R5 so sometime next year. So if you wanna see development like this, please consider supporting me over on Buy Me Coffee. I know, shameless plug, but I don't have the time anymore to do YouTube, this development, and the day job, and the day job is really what pays the bills. Okay, so number one, let's go ahead and go to 40 meters, and just a few settings. Like I said, I configured most of this out of the box on a clean install, uh, so no call, we'll put my call sign, and as you can see, it has my grid square in there and a couple of my uh, call groups, so I am KT7RUN. And then let's go to audio, and let's see if we can find the audio device. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's the TI device, so this is good to know. Again, kind of unclear on why it doesn't have the uh, audio controls for speaker and mic. That'll be part of the dev plan for next week. And then we'll click OK. And I was, I'm hoping, yep, the audio levels drop, so we might be okay. And this is gonna be real time, guys, but this is literally the first time I'm doing this. And let's see if we can even tune up here. Yep, radio tuned up, cool. And I'm gonna do an all call, or a um, request to my TTP network group. And uh, let me right click that. And we'll do directed to TTP. And I don't use the heartbeat with my group, we use the signal to noise ratio. And I want to see where we are once this thing keys up in about eight seconds. And you guys can't see it, but I want to see this SWR meter for the first time. Yeah, we're transmitting. Again, I'm not familiar with radio. I don't even know if there's anything that needs to be done on the radio. I need to figure out how to get the SWR to show, because I really don't know if uh, the antenna system's actually behaving. So it looks like we got some activity. All right, cool, guys. This is amazing. So first time clean boot of... Um, MCOM Tools R3 build number five. First time using the, the IC705 in the field. I already have six stations that got back to me using an NFED half wave deployed at six feet. So I'm gonna do a video on Milton and Helene on how much little ham nerd crap gear you actually need to do this stuff in practice. Let's take a closer look at all the ham nerd goodness here. So again, everything in red here, these are all the stations that responded back to me. A bunch of guys in my group, WN7D is a local, KK7, UMM is local. Most of the seven call signs are local. All right, so that was successful. I sent out a message to everybody uh, at the TTP call group. Basically said this is a uh, first field test and it went out beautifully. So again, uh, let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a, a realistic off-grid comms, not with the Baofeng radios, because I think, honestly, guys, for everything that's going on with all of the weather, weather patterns that are impacting Americans uh, in the, uh, the southeast, that you don't need a whole lot of investment in HF gear. What you do need is a group of like-minded individuals with similar gear, a comms plan, and uh, very modest deployments. I can carry around, I guess, this IC705 lunch pail or my 818 man pack, even that little $150 True SDX works great with this system. Not a whole lot of power requirements. Heck, I'm running on the internal uh, little HT battery on the 705. So let me do it down below if you want me to do a realistic regional off-grid comms video. And uh, I can share with you guys all the experience I have doing uh, regional communication with zero infrastructure. No repeaters, just you and the other people you want to talk to 
in about a 300 mile radius. All right, so like I said, the 705 is a radio that I knew personally was not for me. It really is your decision on what gear works best for you. Uh, this thing, in my opinion, has a really awkward form factor and is a bit too delicate for what I do. And the only way that I could think to make it somewhat of a field expedient system was to do a handful of things. So I took some measurements of the uh, radio first at the house about a week ago and put the armor lock frame. So I'll talk about that in a second. And I did a search on Google and Amazon and I found, actually I knew for a fact that a DSLR camera bag would work pretty well based on my early experience with the early man packs. And that's what I actually did here. So I think this one probably ran me about 30 bucks. I'll put a link down below. Uh, this is likely not the bag that I'm gonna use. I actually have a cheaper bag, about 17 bucks that I found that I think might work even better and will be a better fit. So number one, I wanted the ability just to have really the two pieces of connectors that I needed. Uh, number one is the single USB interface, and then the other one is the access for the coax. All right, so like I said, I'm a big fan of the Armlock TPA pack frames, and uh, this one actually worked out pretty well. Uh, they do have an MBS package. It actually supports a 10 amp hour battery, and it's a Kydex box that sits on the bottom and you has a adjustable arm. I opted not to go with that because I can get by with very little power uh, based on the modes I'm using. You saw that I was able to communicate with everybody in my network. Uh, so I'm actually just running the stock battery. But the nice thing about the armor lock uh, pack frame is that it fully protects everything. It's a full freaking roll cage. Now, a couple decisions I had to make with this one are, how do I relocate things? So, number one, I went with the RF package from Armorlock, and yes, Armorlock did send this to me. We are buddies, so keep that in mind. And the RF package, I'm running it basically at a angle here, and then I've got the cable dressed between the uh, frame and the body housing, and then I opted to mount it or mount it in this position here. And the reason for it is, I always plan to run it vertical like this in a bag like that. So if I had to drop a, um, a vertical antenna with a counterpoise, I could do that easily and fairly quick. The other thing I like to do is be very consistent with all of the USB cables because I've learned from experience which ones are uh, good in terms of preventing RFI. So I've always had good luck with the cable creation USB cables. This is the... Um, USB-C model, even though this is USB micro on the 705, I always put the ferrite beads as well as the captive dust cap. So I'll put links down below if you guys wanna help support the channel. I also incorporated a zip tie at the top here for strain relief. Again, you can see another ferrite bead right here. And then on the inside, I opted for a right angle USB micro to USB-C. So my goal is to have everything fully dressed and this is where the field expedient comms comes into how I personally like to operate. Zip open the top lid, drop on the feed line, turn on the radio, turn on the computer, pick the radio, you're off to the races. Well, folks, that's my cue. The dogs are going crazy out here in the Tonto National Forest. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this little experiment here. Um, very minimal editing, but I wanted to prove the point that the way that I approach software and development of all my products is with lots of field testing. I take the data I capture out in the field and incorporate that. The products that I build, uh, don't take this the wrong way, are not for you. They are designed for me. And if you have the same style of operating as I do, you're in luck. Uh, I just don't believe in developing generic one size fits all solutions that are appropriate for a big group. Uh, you can think of what I develop as a niche within a niche. Anyways, uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, we're going to be doing the uh, TTP uh, Nerd Hour Week 2, and I'll walk through all of the features with the Buy Me A Coffee guys, again, or the Buy Me A Coffee group. Again, guys, I hate to keep saying this, but uh, I am on the fence on whether I need to shut down everything the Tech Prepper related uh, probably by Q1 of next year. I have to make that decision. Um, Having this time off has made me realize that I shouldn't be working 90 hours a week like I have been for the last two years to keep this going. And I have to make a decision of day job versus this. this. So I'll figure that out for a Q1 of next year. But certainly R3 is coming out. There will be an R4 release. And uh, this stuff is all done uh, pretty much in the open. I just do the behind the scenes with the members on Buy Me A Coffee. So if you believe in what I want to do 
and want to make sure that I continue to do this next year and beyond, please consider coming over and supporting me. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.